Well hey there folks and welcome back once again here to the Hop House. It's Eddie and we're going to do uh, another beer review. We're going to do the last one that I think I've got from the Tesco range that were released beginning of March 2021. Do me a favour, if you just found us here, please give us a thumbs up for this video, like, share and subscribe to this channel. It's the Hop House, Hoppy Beer, House Music, that's how we roll. Okay, so this is another Virgin Beer review. Boom! Mind blown. Um, and it's from a craft brewery that are doing really good things. They're getting the name out there. They're really doing good things. And I do quite like them, I have to say. Um, I've done a few of their... I've drank quite a few of their beers. Uh, I haven't reviewed that many on the channel. I think I've only reviewed the one, which was a Session IPA, which... I'm actually quite a fan of, but it's sort of a beer that you taste halfway through it and when you're halfway down it, which is a bit strange. Anyway, let me show you what we're gonna review. Virgin review together, me and you. Gonna review. Okay, so it is from Salt Beer Factory. <sighs> uh, owned by Osset Brewery up in Yorkshire. Uh, Salt is from Saltair. That's where they have their brew house. It used to be the Hop Saltair, it's now Salt Beer Factory. And it is. Huckerback New England IPA. Yes, we're on the New England IPAs. Um, it is 5.5% ABV. So, is it really a New England IPA? Who we've discussed before, 6% and above. American Wise is usually a New England IPA, but I say 5% in the UK is, is, is an IPA. So, I'll allow it. Salt, I'll allow it. Like it matters what I say. Um, juicy and hazy it says it's got the same similar sort of style that all the salt beers have they always have these like hexagony is it hexagon that shape I think it's a hexagon isn't it um, but they always have that sort of wrap and they're all different colours they name their uh, because it's salt beer factory it's not although it's called salt because it's from salt air they're not actually um an ex salt factory they were a lot to do with textile mills and stuff so all the names of their beers are named after sort of textile materials or stuff to do with that industry like names of machines or processes or something it's quite thoughtful the way that they've gone into how they've gone about naming their beers so this is a new england ipa or if you want to be a, a snob about it a, a, a new england session ipa new england pale ale Five and a half percent. Let's get it out into the glass. See what we get. I've got high hopes for this. However, I have to say, and I'll post it in this order. So I've just literally finished, or well, about 10, that's been out the fridge about 10, 15 minutes. So about 15 minutes ago, I finished this, which was ridiculous. London Beer Factory Jungle Trip. That was their New England IPA that came out into Tesco alongside this release as well from Salt. Um, price wise £2.40 a can £2.40 so they've gone below 3 quid, which was sort of the standard price ish for these 440ml cans uh, and you can get a, a 4 pack for £8 now when they were first released they were a bit lower the original cans were 2 quid, so when I bought these they were £2 each with a club card then they went from the eight, the 4 pack for 8 quid, going down to about £6 £6.50 again with a club card so if you're going to go to tesco and you've got a club card watch out for the offers right out into the glass virgin beer review oh there's a bit of smoky smokiness there coming when i opened up that can a bit of a uh, trapped carbonation right it should be hazy it should be if there's anything like custardy color like the last one it should be a light yellow to orange color this one looks darker than the previous one. It does look darker, or does it? Yeah, ooh, ooh. Maybe a little bit darker. Yeah, this is more the fruit juicy color. The other one was a bit lighter, a bit more custard based. Now, 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 now. There's bits floating about in this because I've just seen them. I just cotton them on the can. Don't think. You're gonna pick it up, the camera? Maybe not, but they're floating about there. So this must be a can-conditioned beer for £2.40. 
just like the Lupulus X was. So yeah, I've got it in the cider glass because I haven't got a big enough glass for these cans yet. My lovely new glass sort of fits 330ml quite nicely, but I like to get it all in one go. Right, so yeah, it is sort of his custardy colour. Bit dark now, it's more fruit juice, definitely more fruit juice, a little bit darker. If I had custard this colour, I probably wouldn't be that happy about it. It's hazy, it's cloudy, I can't see through it. It's got a white head on it, it looks the business. I'm just gonna jig it around a bit. And yeah, the lacing on the glass looks quite nice so far. But we'll get down it a bit and then we'll re-jig and re-whiff. But for the meantime, gonna get the nose in there, we're gonna give it a whiff, see what we can sniff. Oh, this tastes, the last beer tasted sweeter than this and almost like sugary. This tastes more tropical fruity. Yeah, definitely some mangoes, some pineapple, lemon, lime, papaya. It just smells like a day on the beach. It really does when you... When you sort of go up, I mean, I used to work on cruise ships um, and sometimes you go up on the buffet area and they'd have all this like fresh fruit laid out and smell was just, it was like this. It was amazing. Really, really, really nice. I mean, I used to have a roommate who was from St. Lucia. We used to pick mangoes. He took me to his, his grandma's house in the middle of the island of St. Lucia. We picked mangoes out the trees and it was just, oh. I did like the Caribbean for that sort of tropical fresh fruit smell. It was really kind of cool. Never known anywhere else like it. Probably because of the climate, right? Okay, so it smells fantastic. It looks the business. Darker than the last one. The last one was really custardy. This is more your sort of tropical, as I've said before in other reviews, this is your tropical fruit juice. You know, you're on all-inclusive holiday in Spain and you go up there and you've got your breakfast, you've got your fruit juice machines, tropical. And you press it and it gives you this, obviously without the head. If you had a head on your fruit juice, you'd be a bit worried. Right then, I'm going to try it. I'm going to taste it. I'm going to get in there. So, bottoms up and down the hatch. Whoa. Salt Beer Factory. Salt, salt, salt beer factory. What are you doing to me? Now, the last beer had the mouthfeel where it sort of it fizzed down the side of my tongue like I was eating sherbet, like sherbet dip. And I really like that. I thought it was unique and different. This doesn't do that. So the mouthfeel kind of preferred a bit more on the London Beer Factory just because it was different. This probably has a more instinctive New England style IPA mouthfeel. There you go. For those that love the lacing, look at it lace. Can you see it? Can you see it chasing? Chasing the foot, sort of froth around the bottom of the head. Ooh. Looks great. This, yeah, this is definitely more traditional, tradi if you can say traditional New England IPA, I mean, they've, they've only been out a, couple, a few years. They're everywhere now, though. They really are everywhere. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. That tastes like a day on the beach. It's tropical. It's fruity. It's lovely. It's sweet citrus there's so much flavor going down the hops are down the side of the tongue there's sweetness in the middle and it sort of amalgamates this has got more of a sweet finish the um the london beer factory one was quite tart on the finish this is a bit more sweet it doesn't dry your mouth out as much but it makes you want more it makes it a bit moreish But fair play London London Beer Factory. That was the last one. Fair play Salt Brewery. Salt Beer Factory. Really, really, really nice. I thought it would be. 
and I'll be honest with you I don't know why I didn't do this sooner I don't know why I didn't drink this before reviewing it and did it as a virgin beer review I think because I've got loads of beers stashed down here I've got trolleys and stuff and my, my other half's gin's on the bottom she's got loads of flavoured gin so it's not all me and then we've got a mixture of her lagers uh, she likes fruit ciders although some of her cans of fruit cider are down this bit but anyway loads of beer down there and I think this was sort of towards the back I'd sort of when I restacked it I put it towards the back and then I was suddenly like I've done the salt one from Tesco, the March release, and I looked and was like, oh no, it's all the way back here. So that's why I haven't done it till now. Otherwise, I would have quite happily have drunk that, thought, wow, that's great, and get to Tesco and get some more. So that, I would probably buy a four pack of. As I would that, I'd definitely buy a four pack of that. That was ridiculous. Um, it's very nice. It's very, very nice. See the sediment rising now. It's lovely. It's very, very nice. I do think the London Beer Factory edges it though. I just think because that's so different. I've never had the beer sizzle in the mouth like that before. It was quite erotic. It wasn't erotic. I don't know the way I reacted, maybe it was. Right, let's read on the can. So, uh, standing on the shoulders of giants, Salt is a microbrewery on a mission to unify heritage and modern brewing. Our homeland, the UNESCO village of Saltaire, was built by a super progressive pioneer of women's rights in, in the 1800s. We adopt the same progressive spirit throughout our modern brewing styles. The inspiration of our forefathers can be seen in our name, throughout the brewery, and the textile terms used to name our beers. I think that spiel is actually on the back of every can and it shows you the building there that used to be sort of a textile factory and it's now a salt beer factory. Well actually first it was the hop in salt air. So um, we've done some Osset Brewery beers. Osset Brewery do own salt. Salt is like their sister company. Or the salt beer factory was a micro brewery of Osset. So Osset Brewery was the big company. They had Salt Brewery, they had Fernandez in Wakefield, they had the Rat Brewery, and they had another one, the Riverhead Brewery, which is in Marsden between Huddersfield and Manchester. It's sort of amalgamated into the core beers, some of that, the range of each. Uh, so hence the, the wonderful White Rat became a, an Osset beer from a Rat Brewery. But Salt have grown so well that it's almost... Maybe they've outgrown Osset a bit, but in terms of the craft beer side of it, Osset Brewery do more cask beers and things like that. But Salt have done wonders. Uh, they've gotten into supermarkets, they've gone to beer festivals and things like that, and they've, they've really done really well. Um, and considering the first beer I had from Salt, hang on, this is the first beer I had from Salt, I've got another kind of it here, the Duke, the Session IPA. Um, and the first time I had it, on, it was actually on cask. In an Osset brewery pub in the Hop in Wakefield, and I was a bit like, you know, like, oh, do you want to try this? This is our new microbrewery. Excuse me, sorry. Um, and I was like, yeah, it's all right. But some of the other stuff, I mean, this is tremendous. It really, really is good. It is really good. Does it actually tell us anything about the actual beer? Oh yes, here we are. It's here. So, Hookerback, or it's pronounced Hook. Uh, back hooker back new england ipa so number one it's a strong linen cotton fabric with a rough surface for toweling and glass cloths number two a golden juicy and hazy new england ipa with notes of stone fruit and lemon verbena verbena so there you go i don't think it tells us what hops are in it it tells us that it contained barley and oats. That's all that it tells us. Huckerback, New England IPA. Now, Salt Brewery have got, there's some other beers down there that are a lot stronger. So this is five and a half percent, right? So they've got a couple of double IPAs, which I have to review on the channel. One from Tesco and one from Morrison's. They're both 8% ABV and they're both £3.50. So from a cost price, if you're looking at beer, 
at a cost price and you want to get into trying different beers whether it be canned beers or bottled beers or whatever I would highly recommend this for the price £2.40 you buy a four pack for eight quid making it £2 a can and the quality that you get it puts things like Aldi to shame you know Aldi when they do their own sort of craft beery things that are about £1.59 a can you spend 60p more and you get this and the London Beer Factory and the Vocation Tropical well I've got another can of it there look um, got another can of it because I think it's the new brew and I need to, I need to re-review it anyway more on that in a different video when I do that that's tremendous it drinks really nice it's lovely it's not got the fizzy element of the London Beer Factory but the, the mouthfeel is really really good it's two thumbs up without a doubt I'll buy that again quite happily I have to say, I've been really, 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 really impressed with the hoppy beers that have come out in this Tesco release in March. So the Trahopical blew my mind. The Mallow Laser Quest I thought I was going to hate and I actually quite liked it. Uh, and then these two have been really good. Uh, oh, the Lupulus X. Oh, Buxton Lupulus X. It's now probably my favourite Citra beer. Two thumbs up. Thank you very much. Like, share and subscribe. And we'll see you again for another review in the future. Ciao for now.